Today I've got five easy crafts for you to make. They'll take you a little longer, but they're worth every minute. Wait till you see the finished items. Right, let's get over to my desk and start creating. This is what I've woken up to this morning. It's part way through one of my projects. I had a piece of driftwood that I cut into two identical pieces. Then I glued, I sanded it first, so it, it was very rough. And then I glued the two pieces together. I put some clamps on, but it was still bending a little in the middle. It wanted to curve up. So I popped some tins of paint on top and left it overnight. So let's have a look this morning. Did it work? Take my tins of paint off. Take my clamps off. And that is a really easy way of making yourself something, a, a much more substantial piece of wood. You may have a piece of wood this size, or you can make one smaller, it doesn't matter. So now I want to make this look like a little house. I've got four lollipop sticks that I cut both ends off. Line them up on my square. So now I measure my door, which is about three inches long. So I'm going to cut two lollipop sticks off to two and a half inches long. Now I'm going to glue these to hold the door in place, or the planks of the door. A little bit of hot glue. And one in the middle. So now you've got two options. You can have a much neater door, but I don't want that. I want a rustic looking door. So I'm going to be putting that side showing. Just going to sand down the edges. I cut two lollipop sticks that, if I put them onto the roof there, you can see come a little bit further than the edge. So before we assemble it, I'm going to paint things. So I'm going to paint the door. Because this is a fall decoration, I thought it would be nice to have an orange front door. Very pumpkin-like. While that's dry, and I'm going to pick my favourite side on this piece of wood. That side, I think. Add some white wax to the front of your house. I've done it around the back as well, just in case anybody sees the back and on the side. I haven't put any on the bottom or the top because they won't be seen. And now out with a darker wax for the little roof sections. If you wanted to put a fatter roof, use even up to an inch thick batten, I suppose you could, and it would still, I think, look very nice. For the base, I've got this piece of wood. It's an offcut from a shelf. I've given it a little sand down. And now I'm going to hot glue this to the base, like that. But I'm not only going to hot glue, I am also going to put some wood glue because this really does need a lot more support. Now we pop the front door on. It's not quite dry, but if you don't tell anybody, I won't either. And I cut out two pieces of lollipop stick that are about two inches long, and these ones are about one and a quarter inches long. You probably need to do these measurements yourself because I'm not very good at accurate measuring. And then I cut two pieces at one and a quarter inches and then cut those in half and took a little sliver off as well. I'm just not that accurate. <laughs> Let's see if this works. And then I'm going to glue this in place and fix all the gaps and the wobbliness when it's glued to the back end. Now I'm going to glue on a little rustic door handle, which is actually a bead. I got this little piece of wood that I cut at the same angle as the roof. And now I'm going to glue that on like a little chimney pot. 
Now I'm going to paint the garden path. So I've got this grey, it's Art Studio Soft Grey. I bought these from Hobby Craft and they're not the thickest paints in the world, as you can see. You could probably take a gazillion quarter who actually wanted to completely cover this. Hmm, I thought I could use it to my advantage maybe and do a texture but it looks like lots of little cupcakes lying down on the path. That really didn't work. I'm going to try fixing that. Always play with your paint. It's surprising what you can come up with. I've got a different make. I've got this up grey black paint. I'm going to stir it in with a little bit of grey. It'll probably be well, a bit more grey. Not too worried because I don't like this. I don't think I'll be using it again. Not my favourite path in the world, but it'll do. And I'm going to paint some green for some grass all around the rest. The paint here is virtually dry, so we're going to carry on. I'm going to try making it at this angle so it may be a bit clumsy for me where I keep seeing my head appear in the shot. I'll try to cut those bits out. Now we need to decorate it and it's always the most fun part. I've got this little bit of, it's a twig off part of a pick. So I'm going to glue it not to the floor but to the house. Sounds a bit crazy but you've just not got enough grip on the little tiny bit that would join the floor. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of edge in along the bottom here with this reindeer moss. I cut myself six little pieces of wood, about an inch long. And I'm going to glue them together. First, the bottom layer are going to be three together. And put two on top of that in the groovy bits. Groovy bits, oh, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? More like a 60s type disco than a log pile, which is what I'm making. And now a little bit of glue in that groovy bit. And then, last thing and now we've got a little log pile and I'm going to glue that by the front door and now I'm going to glue this bead and it looks like a little water barrel I think that's really cute the work is always ongoing in a little cottage like this plenty of housework so I've got this little broom isn't that cute and I thought I could lean that where should we put it mm, I think I'll lean it against the tree that looks cute Got this little piece of lollipop stick I've written the cottage and put some little nail holes on it's very rustic my handwriting is very rustic but fortunately so is the cottage that above the door of course if the lock cottage has a log fire there's going to be a bit of smoke coming out of the chimney so I got this little bit of wadding from inside a pillow and I'm going to glue that onto the top of the chimney pot on with a finger protector because this isn't very thick and glue it into place. Now I'm going to add this little piece of burlap. This is a self-adhesive burlap. And I just love self-adhesive burlap. It's a bit stretchy, but a joy to work with. And I'm gonna put this right the way around the outside. I didn't know whether to use our barrel as a water barrel or a planter, but I think I'm going to try putting some flowers in. Brighten the place up a little bit. All cottagers love to have flowers in their garden. And the people who live at the cottage are no different. They do love a little bit of floral decoration. Who do you think lives in this cottage? What story would you make up about this little cottage? Well, I think that looks like a really cosy, pretty place to live, especially in the fall or the autumn. What do you think? Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display.
this craft. I'm going to use this bike. This, I had it from B&M Bargains. You can see the price tag was £8. It's a rattan bicycle planter. But I had it for £2 in the sale. So I thought, oh, I'm going to do something with that. I thought it was perfect for fall. So I'm just going to chop my tag off. And then put it to one side because I need to make some other things first before we start using this. I got three popsicle sticks or lollipop sticks and I didn't want the edges perfect because I want them to look a bit like plants but not too tatty. So I cut them with a the scissors. Very, I had to work at not being careful just to give them a bit of a wobbly edge. Then I'm just going to glue them together with small popsicle sticks. Stir up my Rust-Oleum chalky finish furniture paint. Now I'm painting them white. Again, you've got the option, if you're doing something like this, you can paint the bike and then paint the sign to match, or you can just stain the bike and stain the sign, or you can not paint either. And I've got this 50 cents pumpkin. So I'm going to glue these in place on the front of my little sign. If this was a summer craft, I don't think I would distress this in any way. But because it's autumn, I thought I'll just put a little bit of brown around the outside. It just gives it that autumnal look. So now we get back to my bike. I've got some of this florist foam that I've cut roughly to size. I just need to cut it now, take the corners off with my ruler. I love doing this. Oh, listen to that noise. it in and then I'm just gonna pop these little wedges in then to hold it a little bit more firmly and then I've got this that came out of the bottom of a little display and it's got this plastic on so I think I might try leaving that on and see how it goes I've got some pumpkins I took these off an old fall wreath some apples I got these from the range in the UK and they were I think 129 for a well I'll show you the other one as well I think there were three picks in there some acorns I think they were three for 129 too and I may even use some pine cones these were free I picked them up as we were going for a walk along the street and they were pine cones everywhere I've got some of this too it's an absolutely gorgeous foliage I had this off Susan too thank you Susan it's going to come in very useful so I'm going to glue these in place to the plastic if I, there wasn't plastic on I'd poke them in but I think because the plastic is there I'll take advantage of that and I'm going to glue them in going all the way around the outside next I'm going to glue some of these autumn colored leaves or fall colored leaves it depends where you live in here in the UK we say autumn and in other places I know in the US you say fall now these pumpkins still have the picks on from when they were glued into the wreath. So, pop a few on. Sorry, I think you may have missed some of that. Some of it was off camera. So, I pop my three pumpkins in there. So, now I've got a selection of picks that I can pop into here to fill up some more of the gaps. So there are still some gaps that need filling, and these are going to be perfect. I'm going to try putting some brown on this leaf because it's a little bit too green. And now to finish off around the outside, I've got some moss here. This is not an expensive moss. I've got an apple tree that's very heavy laden with moss and I don't think it's very happy. I take the moss off and then I can use it in my craft. And I think the tree gets a chance to breathe a little bit. So I think that display is perfect. So now we just need to stick the sign on the front. I've made a little shabby looking bow with some raffia. I'm going to glue this onto the side because I think it needs something. And this gingham ribbon that I got, I had a tiny bit, so I've managed to make a bow out of it and some tails. I'll glue the tails on first and then the bow. I love it. Right, let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. This 
this craft is purely experimental for me. I had an idea and I thought, well, I might as well try it out on camera. And you can see how I develop my ideas and see if this one is going to work or not. I'm going to use another one of my placemats. I bought five placemats for a pound and I'm unravelling them and I have yards and yards of this stuff. This plated raffia. Brilliant bargain. So much material. Decided I'm going to cut about 18 inch strips. So I've got these two done. Let's cut the rest. So I've made 16 of these circles and I'm going to tie them with the join facing roughly inwards. It doesn't got to be absolutely accurate, I don't think. Uh, so this is all experimental for me. And then I'm just going to open out all these individual circles and it could be a bit of a fight. So now that they're roughly in place, I'm going to just wind a lot more twine around that middle section to make it look neater. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get these perfectly aligned, so I'm going to carry on. I'm going to glue in my stump or my stalk, which is just another piece of wood from the garden. But I'm going to put a lot of hot glue because I'd like it to stick to lots of these to hold them in place. Pop it in there, support the bottom, then give it a bit of a press. And then to neaten up this join, I'm going to put some hot glue in. And add a piece of plaited raffia around the top there. Now I'm going to add some of these leaves with some hot glue around the stem of the pumpkin. Now I know if you want it to be anatomically correct, then these pumpkin leaves would be facing up. But I'm putting them facing down because I like that. And at the end of the day, this is not an anatomically correct pumpkin, is it? Not by any big stretch of the imagination, so it'll be fine. Decorate your pumpkin with as many pretty little things as you want to. And then I'm going to get this gorgeous bow that Susan sent me. Isn't it lovely? Quite a length. I'm going to try. I may be overdoing this. We'll check when it's finished. But I think if I cut it to there. And now I just cross it over. Kind of roughly where the middle is. Cross it over to the size you want your loops to be. About there, I think, for me. Put your wire around. And twist the wire to tighten. I like to use a pliers to do that. It's much easier. I'm going to glue this to the stem about a third of the way down. And to hide a little bit of wire that's tying the bow, you can put a little bit of ribbon around that, but I'm just going to put a few little berries. Finishing off with a little bit of dovetailing when you've decided how long you want these to be. I think about there will be fine. So I'll keep these little off cuts and they make lovely little bows that I can put on picks for some other decorations. Now this pumpkin may not be perfect. It may not be anatomically correct and it may be a bit of a jumble until I've taken it to my display area and sorted it out a bit better. But I love it. When you think this was made with an old placemat and some bits and pieces glued on, I think it's pretty impressive. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display and let me know what do you think. Is this crazy or do you like it or could you take it or leave it? this project I forgot to turn my camera on so I'll tell you what I'm doing I got this thicker florist wire and I cut a few pieces if I show you what I'm going to be working on I'll hold that there this is a 16 inch diameter fiberglass vintage tray so I'll cut two at 14 inches 
two at 12 inches and two at 10 inches and one somewhere in the middle because I'm not very good at measuring so one's ended up somewhere in the middle. So you cover your piece of wire with some twine and every about two inches add a little bit of hot glue just to stop it sliding about too much. I know this can be a bit boring to watch so I thought well I'll get most of this done and then I'll turn the camera on and then I did a whole talk explaining what I was going to be doing and I'd forgotten to turn the camera on. I'd already started this one so I can't show you how I start one of these off. It's easy enough just glue your twine to the top and then start winding. Keep going till you get to the bottom but one recommendation I do have if you're wearing something that could scag easily like a sweater or some delicate lace blouse or something like that just be very careful because this end does fly about a little bit when you start to work really quickly and if there's a kink in it if it's like that for instance it's going to start catching in your clothing when i'm doing this i'm wearing my glasses so my eyes are fairly well protected but just be careful of your eyes too i'm not going I'm not going all the way to the bottom with this. I leave it a couple of inches short and then a little bit of hot glue to finish off. So now I've got these seven pieces. So now I'm going to form a tree shape. So I'll spread these out so I've got plenty of space. Taking the longest two, I'm going to start to bind these together using some of my string. Now I'm going to add another branch in. And then come over to this side. And a little bit lower, we're going to be adding another branch in. Point, I'm just going to push the bottoms of the twig things together because otherwise you'll end up with a very thick fat bottom on this and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for more of a rounded shape. It looks like a little person, a little stick insect. To spice it up now I put two branches together, one slightly shorter in length than the other and then do a little bit of winding to make like a thicker bow and decide where I want that to be. I think there. So I'll come down a little bit further on this side, bring in the last branch and carry on wrapping. Ah, I thought I had a branch missing. There it is. Oh well, we'll make a very short branch. Always remember, never beat yourself up if you get your craft wrong. Just adapt it. At the end of the day, the most important thing in any craft project is to have fun. I'm certainly doing that, even though this isn't perfect, I'm loving it. I'm going to get some more string and I'm going to come up and start a bit higher again because this is getting a little thin now with some of these haven't got twine all the way down because I didn't know how far I'd need the twine. So this will just bulk it out a little bit by putting another layer on. And I may wrap this around a little bit thicker in places too, to try and give it a bit of depth. I'm very pleased with the way that came out but now we need to paint the tray and this is chalky finish paint in Blenheim blue. I was expecting to do three coats of paint on this but I think I'm going to get away with it with a maximum of two. Doing a very good job of covering. The back of this for some reason had little holes in so maybe I should have used a bit of primer first but that's fine because it's only the back and the front is fine. I'm going to turn this over and attach a hanger and I'm just going to use 
a layer of twine. It's not going to be terribly heavy, so I think this will be plenty strong enough. Put the twine on, a bit more hot glue, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of masking tape. I know it isn't the same colour as the back, but because I have to paint the back anyway, you won't even see it then when I paint it over it. Well, it won't be very noticeable, and it will be the back. I got these from the range. I was looking in Hobbycraft and none of the letters were the, quite the right size and these are just the Crayola ones. They were 26 for 99p so I needed two packs because I needed a double L. This is Art Studio Pumpkin Orange. Now we come to the assembly which is the most exciting part. So we've got our tree here and this is going to be glued to this big plate or if you're just using a wood round, whatever it is you're using. And we're going to use good old hot glue. So make sure that you've got your branches roughly where you like them. Because once they're glued into place, they're not going to be moving. If you want to put some little kinks in them or whatever you want to do, make sure you're happy with them. So now, lots and lots of hot glue. I'm going to put a few leaves on the trees. Now I know these leaves are probably just a little bit big for the size tree I'm making, but it doesn't matter because this is quite whimsical, so it'll look fine. So let's have a look where we want to put some leaves. I'm only going to put a few actually on the tree because most of them will have blown down by now. Yes, I like that layout, so now glue them into place. I was at one point wondering whether to put some string or something around the edge, but nothing for me would look right. So I'm just going to frame it with a little piece of this fern either side. And we're going to cover the floor with all these fallen leaves. I'm just going to put a little bit of darker ink around the edges of my letters just to make them look a little bit more autumnal. And if you're messy like me and you've got some finger marks over where you've been gluing, just paint over them. That colour will blend in when it's dry. So now we've got one final thing to do and I think a bow would really make this look lovely on the bottom. Not going to make this too big and flamboyant, one quite a sensible looking bow. Okay, I'll use a white pipe cleaner for this, it's much easier to twist. Fix it to the bottom bow with the pipe cleaner and then do some chopping on the back to remove the excess and then glue this false acorn to the bow so it hides the join where the pipe cleaner comes. So now we just need to glue the bow to the bottom of the plaque. Well, I think that turned out really well, but let's have a look at what this looks like up on the display. I'm going to be using more of this which is my placemat that I'm unravelling. Oh, I've got five and I'm still working at it trying to get through them and I've unravelled them to make this. I was going to show you assembling this on camera but I think it's going to drive you bonkers because it took me so long and you can see there are some kinks for some reason every now and then in the placemat they folded these really tightly and it's damaged some of the raffia but I think we'll be fine we'll be okay. So I started off by making an inner circle and that was 35 centimetres to here, mark it, 35 centimetres to here and then I put a peg on. The next layer was 45 centimetres to there, peg it into place and then 45 centimetres to the top. Then this was 60 centimetres to the bottom and 60 centimetres to the top. 
I found the pegs are the only things wide enough to clamp this because it is so wide. Bear with me, this is going to look better when we've finished. So now I'm going to measure a piece that's 20 centimetres long, chop it off, and this is going to hold the shape of the pumpkin because at the moment it tends to want to be big and fat, which some pumpkins are, but I want a little bit of a sort of downward pointure. So we've got to tether it with this, but this is too flimsy, it would just move about. So my glue in this long piece, and I think this is 16 gauge wire, to this piece of raffia, then I'm going to be able to use this to hold this steady and also to secure these pieces here together. So that took a fair bit of fighting with, but now we're ready to fix it to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go for the bottom first. I don't know why, but I am. Wire that into place. Don't worry, we're going to cover that before the end. Now we pull the top down. The top is going to be covered, so I'm going to glue some of this in as spacers just to make sure that the top rises up higher because if you don't, it could flop down. And every pumpkin needs a stalk, so I'm going to glue this to the top of the pumpkin. Just give it a little wiggle like that. Seems odd, but otherwise you'll end up gluing it to your mat. So now we come to, as usual, the fun part, which is decorating, and it's going to completely change the look on this pumpkin. I'm going to start off by making a flag, which is like a, a short swag, and you can see both the ends. So I'm going to put these two picks together, and decide how long or wide I want that flag to be. So you can shrink it up by moving the wires behind. But I want to put a lovely size bow as well. So I'm going for quite wide. And when I'm sure they're in the right place, I'll wire them together. Making sure that they are facing front. Because otherwise you'll get to the end of wiring and realise one's twisted round and is facing downwards. Or something silly like that. Then just wrap your wire around. And this end up to this side too. Then I'm going to use more wire. Now if you're looking for bargains this is really good at the end of the season you'll get this sort of wire and thicker wires in the gardening section reduced. I always find it easier to cut a little bit of length off the wires before I start the final twisting because otherwise it just gets in the way. And then use your twisty tool or whatever this is called and tighten it up nicely. So I'm finding this is pivoting a little bit so I'm just going to get another bit of wire and just lock it into shape with a wire twist just either side and there turn it round snip off the ends and tighten them up look at these acorns I got these from the range and I'm going to glue those about there-ish I think it's going to take quite a lot of hot glue because they're quite large they're not heavy but they are large these leaves are not behaving I'll move those up so they're sticking up the same as the side over there. And I move that pumpkin up too. This is the problem when you re use the same pick for both sides. They then, when you turn them over, they become the opposites. And so you've got to force them to do what you want them to do, like that. We will be adding more to this display, but I don't want to put anything extra on until we've got the bow. And then we know just how big and flamboyant or how small and neat the bow is, depending on how we're feeling. And then we can fill in around that. To make this bow, I form a loop either side with the tails hanging down, first in the buffalo check, then in the orange check. Scrunch up the middle of the bow where the tie is going to go, take yourself a tie, pop it on and twist the back. This is always best with wire driven if you want it to stand up, but if you want a floppy bow that's fine, 
just don't use wired ribbon for a floppy bow. As usual, I've changed my mind. I made two bows, this one and this one, but I think they're going to spoil the display. So these are going to go, one or the other will go on the bottom. Let's carry on with the top display and add more florals. And I think that would look wonderful, but it's too big. It doesn't fit in with the size. It's hiding the stalk. So I'm going to add some different florals and pumpkins and leaves to the top with a few berries too. Now I place my bow on the bottom and then a last little bit of embellishment on the bows. Well, when you think that was made out of an old placemat and some floral picks, I don't think we did too badly. I'd love to hear if you're going to try this and how do you get on if you do try it? Let me know, I'd love to know. Right, let's have a look what this looks like up on the display. playlist up there and it will show you other videos I've made of creating things sometimes fast and easy sometimes just easy why not go over watch those and see if they inspire you too I'll see you all next time but until then don't forget have fun bye <laughs>